the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. My life depends on you. The wisdom at work in my life depends on you. My destiny depends on you. My understanding depends on you. The scope of my existence depends on you. You are not one of the many things in my life. You are everything in my life. Lift your voice and begin to worship Him. You are not one of the important things in my life oh I depend on you the Bible says trust in the Lord with all your heart lean not on your own understanding it says in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path verse 7 of Proverbs says be not wise in your own understanding. It says, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 to 7. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord, turn away from evil. Lord, we depend on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In one minute, I'd like you to begin to recount all the things that would have not been possible in your life without him. It's important for you to see how relevant God is in your life. He's not one of those factors. He is the factor. Lift your voice. And say, Lord, my breath depends on you. I'm what I am by the grace of God. I'm what I am by the wisdom of God. You are responsible for my understanding. If there is any crown, if there is any glory, if there is any accolade, it belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh, 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 it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh. you as the factor beyond our minds, beyond our efforts, beyond that which we have learned to do. You are that one great reason why we are what we are, where we are, doing what we are doing. You are the wisdom behind this ministry. You are the grace behind our exploits. We acknowledge you. You are the mighty one. We depend on you and we will let the world know that our success is tied to our dependence on you. Keep us in that position, oh God, where we will never see the need to move out and do things without your presence, your guidance, your wisdom, your strength. In you we make our boast all day long, for without you we are nothing and we can do nothing. Lord, we give you praise. Thank you for tonight again. We are gathered in the presence of the living God. Teach us. We submit to your wisdom. O oh, great rabbi of the ages. 
we submit to your wisdom. Build us. Teach us the principles of the kingdom. Bless us, O God, and lift us up. Let us, by revelation, rise to levels where we will become relevant. Thank you, Jesus. We vow to give you the glory because it truly belongs to you. Hallelujah. Lord, when we give you the glory, we do not do you a favor. We do ourselves the best of favors when we give you all the glory. We don't do it because we are doing you a favor. It's yours. It belongs to you. And we acknowledge you. Let the name of the Lord be exalted. In the name of Jesus. Good evening everyone. Please walk up to three people. Just greet them and be seated. Sorry about the noise in the background. You make all things new. Yes, you make all things new. And I will follow you forward. Prophesy to your life. Lord, you Make all things new, yes, you make making your life all things new, and I will follow you forward. One more time with faith in your spirit. Come on, prophesy. You make my life. voices just the voices can we prophesy say you So change the wineskin, oh God, to be consistent with that which you are doing in our lives. And take the glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Before I start tonight, I'd like us to, in one minute, pray for the family and the ministry of Dr. Miles Munro and um, the Bahamas Faith Ministry International. Hallelujah. He passed on to glory together with his wife in a plane crash. Praise the Lord. And um, it's very sad because Dr. Miles has been the pivot of the revelation of the kingdom life in my life and destiny. One book that I read, Discovering Your Purpose, Your Potentials. I read that book and I made a vow that I was going to affect my generation. And is one man that I have come to love. He has mentored my life. He has changed my mindset. And um, part of my goals for next year was to have a personal session with him. And so it broke my heart badly when I heard he had gone to be with the Lord. But one thing 
Dr. Miles said in his lifetime, he said the greatest tragedy on earth is not death, but a life without purpose. I can tell you that he died empty. He released his mindset in books and he set up institutions that will continue his ideologies. I was teaching the School of Ministry students yesterday and um, we're considering a course called Personal Transformation. And we're examining the concept of life and how that it is not so much about the amount of time you spend in your life as it is about the quality of the impact that you make. First, advancing the purposes of the kingdom and then being a blessing to humanity. He consulted for governments. One man who was able to create the balance between the secular realm and the spiritual realm, he stood as a bridge and blessed both realms without compromise. And one of the last messages that he preached before he died was how to die effectively. He taught men how to die. These are men who have cheated death. He encouraged everyone when he went to preach in Kenya. He challenged them to disappoint the grave. Because according to Dr. Miles, the richest place in the earth is not the gold mine in South Africa, nor the oil wells in Nigeria and Iraq, the Middle East, but graveyards where potentials have gone unused. Books that would have changed destinies anointings that would have liberated nations and miles before his death and all through his lifetime it became his conviction and he said disappoint the grave disappoint the grave and although it was a tragic event but he had already prepared to cheat death long the bible says so then teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom can we rise in one minute and pray for Cairo and Carissa, the two children he left behind, well-trained, well-schooled, and pray for the Bahamas Faith Ministries International. Go ahead and pray in one minute. Comfort them, O oh God. Indeed, the world has felt the exiting of a general, generals in the faith. These are men who that Hebrews 11 says the earth is not worthy of. They came with ideologies that conquered this system. They brought Babylon to its knees. They were prosperous from the earthly point of view. They were successful and yet they were relevant. Pivotal to the, the dispensational mandate of the spirit for our time. They cheated death. They reigned in life. These are men who, even in the grave, speak louder than those who are alive. Bless them. Lord, we thank you for giving the earth the gift of Dr. Miles and Ruth. And Dr. Richard Pinder and all the membership of the Bahamas Faith Ministries International. We thank you because they took the banner of leadership and the revelation of the kingdom life to the nations. They fought the fight. They ran the race. They poured their lives like drink offerings. We are epistles and testaments and seals of their apostleships. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we pray that you comfort the ministry. Comfort the membership. We pray the entire nation of Bahamas. In the name of Jesus, we pray that you will bless them. All the sons and the daughters and men and women of God that he left behind. I pray that they will pick up that button and run. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that there will be no discouragement. And Lord, through his life, give us wisdom. That we who are alive will make the most of our life here on earth. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Hallelujah. I want to appreciate um, all those who made last week's service a great time. Uh, we traveled, but God was faithful. I hear the meeting was powerful. The messages were powerful. God bless you. And the Lord increase all of us together in the name of Jesus. God is taking us far. 
And as always, if we submit to the dealings of the Spirit, the Bible says, surely there is an end. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight, I want us to consider a very important subject. It's amazing to see that this is the 11th month of the year. And um, a lot has happened in our nation. A lot has happened in our lives. 2014 has truly been um, an amazing year for many. It's been a tragic year. And, um, but in all of these things, we thank God. And I want to just share with us something that I consider is very pivotal at this point of our lives. I want to share tonight on the power of hope. Very simple message, but it will bless you. The power of hope. Job chapter 6 verse 11. When we look around our world today and um, we see the complexities of um, of living in today's world ranging from terrorism to um, corruption and all kinds of insecurity, death, poverty and all of these vices that have plagued our nation and our lives and here in Nigeria we've had our toll of the share of pain family members have lost loved ones and a lot has happened in our lives many of us have um, had our expectations dashed at one point or the other and it's important that we understand the concept of hope and tonight, I know you will be blessed. When the Lord laid this in my heart, I knew that God was going to speak to us and transform our lives. Job chapter 6, verse 11. Now, when you study theologically the book of Job, um, there's a lot of controversy about the writer of the book of Job and the time, the dispensation with which the book was written. Because... Uh, contextually the book of Job seems to predate the law and all of that. We see activities in the book of Job that happened before the law was given. So we know that um, that must have existed in a dispensation that uh, most fitting would be in between the book of Genesis somewhere around there and theologians generally agree that the book of Job is somewhere there. The writer of the book of Job is unknown because of the character of that book, uh, it is generally agreed that it would take someone who is either not of human origin or who has sustained an intelligence that is out of this world to have communicated and articulated the book of Job very, very um, accurately. Because the book of Job begins telling us about a man a wealthy man who feared God and eschewed evil. And then the Bible tells us something strange. It gives us the picture of a meeting that was held in the realms of the heavens where Satan also came. And uh, discussions were made about this man called Job. And the Lord said, have you considered my servant Job? And Satan said, yes, I have considered him and all of that. But does he serve you just for nothing? You have blessed him. Everything he has touched has prospered. And he said, permit me to take all that you have given him and see if he will not curse you to your face. And whilst that is happening, Job was on the earth realm, not knowing that there was a deliberation that was going on. So it's a very interesting book because uh, it's one book that tries to answer the question of why bad things happen to good people. Have you heard that kind of question? <laughs> why do bad things happen to good people? Why do Christians die? Why, why do we have terrorists come into a church or a meeting and bomb it? Why? What is the contemplation? What is the answer? There are so many things that happen in our world that creates a lot of question. No wonder we have people who were once Christians and then as a result of these unanswered questions, they become atheists or they turn and begin to mock God and do all kinds of things. So Job was that man. In one day, brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us that Job lost his sons, he lost 
his daughters, he lost his houses, he was into real estate, he was into agriculture, he lost his business, he lost everything. The only thing that Job had was himself, his health, and his wife. Within a span of a few hours, men kept coming to bring reports. I was standing and there were hailstones and this and that happened. All your children are dead. I'm the only one who is alive to come and testify. And while he was trying to manage the psychology that comes, the shock, another news comes. This and that was happening and your cattle and everything. And, and at the end of Job's life, uh, after that news, Job gave glory to God. And that was the end of it. And then, you would think that that would be the end of it. Another meeting was held again. And this time around, Satan comes and God is making boast with Job. And Satan says, well, a man can give anything but his health, his life. Permit me to touch his body and see what happens. And the Lord said, fine. Now, that in itself is a big subject of controversy. Why the Lord would permit the devil to go and buffet a man. Hallelujah. And then all of a sudden, Job began to have soil, uh, uh, boils all over his body. And within a short time, that great celebrity, that great man, was reduced to ashes. He sat upon ashes and the Bible says dogs will come and lick his sores. He became a subject of embarrassment. Everybody in the city carried their opinion about him. And then the Bible tells us that three men came, really four. And they came and sat together. When they saw Job's predicaments, they were shocked. And for seven days, they could not talk. After seven days, they began to analyze. They stretched their intellect from border to border. Searching what principles of life might have been violated to be responsible for this man's predicament. Are you following me now? And at the end of it, they said, Job, all we can find is that you are a sinner. And Job said, be careful. Don't bring a curse upon yourself. And there was a little boy who sat. Elihu said, I wanted to speak, but I was afraid because I was little. He said, this matter is not just the issue of experience. There is a spirit in man. We need the Holy Ghost to help us to be able to analyze what would have been the situation. And after all of those conversations, Job's wife looked at him and said, Mr. Man, you know I've been there. We had all these children with you. I've been a faithful wife. Your situation is pathetic. I pity you. So here's the solution. My recommendation to this situation is that you curse God and die. And Job said, why do you speak like one of these foolish women? Hallelujah. And then a lot of things transpired. At a point, Job's humanity, this is the part that, that I want you to get. Job, because you see, Job was a human being. And remember, I did a teaching one time on the four living creatures. How that there are four faces of creatures in the throne. The first is the face of a lion. Hallelujah. And it depicts the believer as a king, as royalty, because we are a reflection of God. So that is the dimension of God that we must permit to be at work in our lives. Mighty king, you rule and you reign. And then the face of a calf, and it symbolizes the servanthood of God, expressed in the person of Jesus, which should be a template for our own lives. How that is not enough just to be a boss and a king, but we must also be servants. Hallelujah. And then the third face is the face of a man, which represents our humanity. And that means no matter how mighty we are, times will come in our lives when our humanities will speak. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible tells us that Jesus was hungry. And he went to the farm to go and get something. In fact, at a point he came to see a fig tree. And then he didn't find food. We see the humanity of Jesus. He wept at funerals. Uh, he was grieved when he saw men doing a lot of things, perverting the temple. There was nothing embarrassing about his humanity. And at times in our lives, sometimes we tend to choke ourselves by refusing to allow our humanities to speak. Let me just stop by to say it's okay to cry. There are times that even great men cry. It's not a symbol of weakness. Are you understanding what I'm saying? 
And so Job's humanity, he was trying to hold it. He said, no, nobody should, should accuse God. God is faithful. Though he slay me, I will praise him. God is faithful. Don't accuse him. But as the situation became prolonged, the Bible says hope deferred can make the heart weary. Job began to ask questions. Lord, I have defended you in the midst of my pain. Is this how you are going to allow me? I would have gotten married if I compromised. But Lord, I'm getting to 35. What is happening? Every time people wanted to speak against you, I defended you. Even when I did not understand why my situation was happening. When my elder brother died, I defended you. A few months later, my younger brother died. I still defended you. And now someone is sick in my family and may die. Where are you? Times can come in our lives, listen to me, when our humanities will probe God and will demand explanations. The power of hope. Are you getting blessed? And so Job was alone and he began to summon God. In fact, he was angry. And he said, Lord, I'm a righteous man, you know, paraphrasing. I have walked blameless before you. What is all this thing? Why is, I demand you. At a point in time, his aggression began to get stronger. And he said, Lord, come down. I, I schedule a meeting with you. If you are faithful and you are just, if your mercies are new every morning, except I have been lied to all my life, please show up. I need answers. There are times when people have locked themselves not to pray for power, not to pray for grace, but to say, Lord, can you tell me why this happened? Why was my father sacked? I know that my father has never been part of those manipulating a lot of things. Why do I see ungodly people prospering? Yet for every time I serve you, I seem to pay a price for it. Hallelujah. And Job said this. Mm. He said, what is my strength? This was a communication of a man's frustration. The humanity of Job was speaking. The Bible says he feared God. That means it was not intentional. There are times, brothers and sisters, that life can push you. And you will make some statements sometimes that you will have to go back and say, Lord, I'm sorry. You will make statements. Someone sent me a text. I think he lost his mom. And um, he sent me the text two days before that time. He said, please pray. Something is wrong. Pray. I, I think a guy or a lady. I don't know exactly who. And then one morning I was on my way to travel. And then I got the text. He said, she's dead. He said, I will never trust God again. God is not to be trusted. Now you would easily say, no, don't say that. Sometimes the best way to help people is to keep quiet. If God is not angry at that statement, you should not be. The Bible says he knows that we are dust. Hmm. Hallelujah. And so Job was frustrated. And he spoke. He said, where is my strength that I should hope? And what is my end? That I should prolong my life. In other words, is it not better for me to die? What good is it now I'm alive? I can't do anything. I can't make money again. My reputation has been dashed to the ground. Everything I have lived for, I have spent my entire life for, is gone. And all I have is untold pain. I'm lying in the dust and dogs dogs who would not even come into my compound have now become my companions and they come to lick my sores. I have become a parable in my own city. And so Job was communicating his frustration. Something happened in chapter 14 of the same Job. Verse 7 and 9 please. Chapter 14 verse 7 and 9. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Chapter 14. Oh, hallelujah. I love the Bible. Job 14, verse 7. Okay, let me just stand there. Job 14. You can just turn. 
so that we save time. Hallelujah. Okay. I'd like us to read verse 7. Everyone. It was the same Job speaking. Mm. Listen, listen. Let me tell you something powerful about, about, look at me. Do you know there is a technology that God has put in man? Every time, this is how it works. At first, we are always afraid. There are things we are afraid of. Are you getting my point? There is a way you interact with your fears such that you no longer fear again. So what would have made you cry yesterday, you will sit in the midst of it. And after challenging God and yelling at heaven, right at that point, a song of hope will arise. Sometimes the best way for God to bring us to a place of strength and victory is to expose us to our fears so that there is nothing else to fear. Hallelujah. Have you seen a man who has had accident and survived? When you shout and say an arm robber is coming, he will still be moving. Lord, you are so good. You are worthy of all my praise. While everybody is panicking, he just says, man, I've seen too much. If he's dead, I would have died. Are you getting my point? There are men who have cheated the devil with their testimonies. They've gone through too much. When the ministry started, there are certain things that would have to be careful about. But right now, ah, there are things you go through in life, you no longer get afraid. Remember when some of you were afraid of carryover? In the name of Jesus, I bind. It will never happen. And you went to the board. You saw it once. You saw it twice. The third time, you just said, Lord, you are faithful. Now you just come and check. What's the CGPA? 2.87. I give you all the glory. And you are comforting somebody who said it dropped from 3.5 to 3.4. And you are saying, may God bless you. Take it easy. You say, can you imagine? God, why did you do this? And you are watching. A time comes when you've gone through too much pain. Your pain suddenly becomes a weapon. It no longer becomes a thing of embarrassment. You look down and it becomes your weapon of victory. And Job in chapter 6 made a statement. He said, I'm dying. What is all this? Heaven was silent. He went through the pain after insulting God. I'm sure he told himself, I'm sorry. Told his wife, I'm sorry. And said, look. And then he said this. Hallelujah. He said, for there is hope for a tree. Who is God speaking to tonight? There is hope for a tree. If it be cut down, that's the part I like. It didn't say if it be rooted out. He said if it be cut down because the root is still there. The miracle is not in what you have lost. It's in what you have left. He said there is hope for a tree. God is speaking a powerful message to someone tonight. No matter what you have lost, God is the reason why you did not lose everything. You lost your first class status, but you are still a student. You lost your family members, but you are still alive. They amputated one leg, but you are still breathing. He said there is hope for a tree. If it be cut down, that it will what? It will sprout again. Ha! The Bible says, rejoice not over me, my enemies. He said, for when I fall, when you are about to sit together and make a funeral, you will see me arise again. He said, rejoice not over me. They that have laughed at my family, they that have looked at them and said, at 31, nobody has gone to school. He said, rejoice not. There is hope for a tree. That there are expectations that you have and now is November. The admission list came out and your name was not there. Yet in a dream, you kept seeing that you got the admission. He said there is hope for a tree. The tragedy is that the tree can be cut down, but not rooted out. He said, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. 
Everybody say there is hope. What is hope? Let's define hope very quickly. You make all things new. Yes, you make all things new. And I will follow you forward. That's what the Lord is doing in someone's life and someone's family tonight. You make all things new. Yes, you make all things new and I will follow you forward. One more time. Let's sing it as a prophecy for our lives and destinies. Come on now. You make all things new. Yes. Definition number one. Hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. First definition. Let's hurry up. Hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for a thing to happen. In other words, is that feeling, that expectancy you have that there's something I expect to happen in my life. And so you keep that fire. You keep that expectation. It's called hope. Hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. Number two. Hope is a firm assurance. A firm assurance. And a belief that things and circumstances will be better in the future. I'll take it again. Hope is a firm assurance and a belief that things and circumstances will be better in the future. Powerful definition. The assurance, firm assurance. So in the first definition, we see that hope is expectation. The second definition, faith is firm assurance. The certainty that you know that it will not end like this. Although for now, things may be unclear. Although for now, things may be unknown. But you have an assurance. I don't know how it will happen. I don't know when it will happen. But I know it will happen. The firm assurance. Number three. I'll give you three definitions. Number three, hope is an optimistic attitude. Optimistic attitude of mind. An optimistic attitude of mind based on an expectation. Keep writing. It's an optimistic attitude of mind based on an expectation of positive outcomes. Based on an expectation of positive outcomes related to events and circumstances in one's life or the world at large. An optimistic attitude of mind based on an expectation of positive outcomes related to events and circumstances in one's life. Now there are some key words that I want us to look at. When you talk about hope, the first thing you talk about is expectation. Say expectation. So I expect that certain things will happen. I may not know how they will happen. I may not know when they will happen. I don't even know where they will happen. But I know that they will happen. Number two, firm assurance. That certainty. That I know, that I know, that I know. That although it's been seven years and we've not been able to have a child, we know that we are going to die as parents. I know 
against all odds, against all medical reports, that I know, that I know, that I know, that I may be SS now, but one thing I know is that when I'll be going to be with the Lord, that genotype must change. I may not know which miracle service will bring the miracle, but I have a firm assurance. And then number three, is an attitude of optimism. I keep my spirit high because I know that things will change. I may not see it. It may not look like it as at now. The job has not come. I've been a graduate for 10 years, no job. I've been a man of God for 20 years and there are just 20 members and I love God sincerely. The ministry is not growing. Finance is not coming. Influence is not increasing. Nothing is happening. Hallelujah. I'm a lady. I've kept myself and I love the Lord. I told God I wanted to marry at 23. I'm 33. It's 10 years of waiting. Nothing has happened. He said, it's an attitude of optimism. Keeping your spirit high. Knowing you are not wasting your time. Very important. Why do we need hope? Very quickly. Why do we need hope? Why do we need to talk about the subject of hope? Why do we really need hope? Is it so important a subject to be talked about? Number one. I wrote here that in a world full of uncertainties, failures and darkness, Hope gives us the strength to continue. In a world full of uncertainties, failures, and darkness, hope gives us the strength to continue. So the first reason why we need hope is because it supplies for us the strength. It gives us the staying power, the impetus to keep going. Even when there is no human reason to keep moving. Hallelujah. Why should I keep serving the Lord? When there are all kinds of things happening. Why should I keep hoping on God? When believers seem to be dying around like chickens in our nation. Why should I keep being optimistic? When it's been years and decades. There's not been any graduates in our family. In a world that is full of uncertainties. Hallelujah. Uncertainties. For instance, the, the, doc, the, the death of Dr. Miles Munro raised a lot of questions around people. You know, because people knew how very confident he was about the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. One of our brothers in the technical department called me this evening to tell me he lost his brother. He just got a report that he lost his brother. Our sister in the media last week, Selena, lost her mom. And the mom was coming from the church. She finished service on her way to go home and a bike carried her. She had an accident, had sustained some internal injuries. And um, by the next day, she gave up. And while she died, they were praying. I've seen a lot of people who... Minutes before people died, they were praying in tongues. In fact, some who died, died speaking in tongues or praying. Uncertainties. There are times when no matter how theologically sound you are, you will be faced with realities that you may not be able to answer people. Why is this happening? Hallelujah. Imagine that that celebrity called Jesus... Imagine a man who conquered death. Will you ever think that he would die? After bringing dead people back to life. You would think even if they wanted to kill him. It was based on that. That Peter took a knife to cut Malchus' ear. Because he said you don't know who you are trying. And Jesus now gave himself. And he said Jesus. I don't understand. What is going on here? Somebody tell me I'm dreaming. What is Jesus doing? Wake up. Are you sleeping? You are handing yourself. Donating yourself to be killed. Jesus said exactly that. And Peter said, come on now. So you fooled us all this while. Where is the jazz you've been using? So you are not really mighty. 
Ah, I knew it. Something in my spirit told me there was more to this man. And he ran away. But he did not know that there is hope for a tree. The Bible likens men to trees. He said, he shall be like a tree. So he said, there is hope for a tree. Jesus died, but he died for only 72 hours. When men were busy discussing his death, he was already alive. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't talk about my death when I'm already alive. We love talking about death. Two men in Emmaus were discussing the death, whereas the expiry time was only 72 hours. Did you know that this phase of your life that is full of stories is only a comma in the long span of the picture that is characterized by unending victory? It's been five years, but God has given you 80 years to prove to the devil he's alive. Hmm. There is hope for a tree. A time came, Peter was locked in prison. Now he understood. I'm sure in prison, Peter will be saying, yeah, so this is what happened to Jesus. After doing great and mighty things, terrible things in righteousness, they, they watched the Holy Spirit come upon the church to begin a new dispensation. And now they locked him. James was in the prison. They said, don't worry, we know James. James is a powerful man. And later they just heard James has been beheaded. They said, you mean the knife entered? He died? He said, James is dead. All of a sudden there was panic. They said, my goodness, we thought the anointing was going to speak for James. Uncertainties. And now they caught Peter. I'm sure Peter concluded because the Bible does not record that when they came, they met him praying. He was sleeping. Peter said, well, for me to live is Christ. To die is gain. Whatever happens, I will go and meet Jesus Christ. But he did not know. See, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. If it is not your time, you remain immortal. Are you hearing what I'm saying? An angel came. And the Bible says the chains just fell by themselves. And he let Peter out. Same thing with Paul. Paul was used to dying. He testified. He would die immediately. They leave his spirit to just enter his body and he get up and find somewhere and rest and the job continues. Strange man. They would take reports that he's dead and they'll hear that he's in another city. Paul. Very strange man. To an extent that some men vowed that they will not eat. Have you read that in your Bible? They say we won't eat until this man dies to our supervision. We must make sure he's dead. I don't know what they did with their lives because Paul lived very long. When he went to that island called Melita, Paul rested there. There was peace and tranquility for some time. In a world full of uncertainty, in a world full of failure, in a world full of darkness, Hope gives us the strength to continue. It gives us the energy to keep on moving. Still the same point. In life, in ministry, in business, in your marriage, in your academics. In other words, hope is the anchor that keeps us standing fast through the storms of life. Just like the anchor keeps the ship. So that the waves will not take you too far. Hope is that anchor. Hope is that anchor. That holds your life. When the boys terror storms. Of uncertainties in life come. And buffet you. Like the house that is built upon the rock. Sometimes it may be shaken. But hope will keep you alive. Number two. Why do we need hope? Hope is one of the pillars upon which faith is built. Hebrews 11 verse 1. Hope is one of the pillars upon which faith is built. Without the revelation of hope, there cannot be faith. The Bible says, now faith is, Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now faith is the what? The confident assurance of the things hoped for. So we must first hope for them. Speaking about Abraham, they said, Who against all hope believed 
in hope against all hope Romans chapter 4 against all hope believed in hope so hope is the pillar one of the pillars upon which faith stands and very quickly I'm rushing so that we'll get to where I'm going to dwell for tonight there are two dimensions of hope as taught in the Bible Two dimensions of hope as taught in the Bible. Number one is what the Bible calls the blessed hope. The blessed hope. Titus chapter 2 verse 13 please. Titus chapter 2 verse 13. The blessed hope. It talks about hope that is beyond this earthly life. That's the first and the ultimate hope. Please listen to me tonight. Hope that is beyond this earthly life. Hope that is beyond the grave. The first dimension of hope that the Bible speaks to us about is what it calls the blessed hope. Titus chapter 2 verse 13. It said looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and of our Savior Jesus Christ. So the first hope that must keep us going in life, that must keep us optimistic in life, that must keep us assured in life, is what the Bible calls the blessed hope. That assurance that no matter what happens, even if this body is destroyed, there is a blessed hope. Are you getting what I'm saying? Confident assurance. That the grave is not the end of life. That in spite of all of the poverty and the terrorism and whatever it is, there is an assurance. The Bible calls it the blessed hope. And listen, every other manifestation of hope you have in your life is useless until this is in place. Because this is hope beyond the earthly realm. Let me tell you something. There is life beyond this place. We were talking very passionately with the school of ministry students yesterday and we were really considering the subject of life. We were actually examining the biblical view of success and fulfillment. And I was sharing with them a few things. If your hope does not transcend beyond this earthly realm, listen to me, then of all men, you are most miserable. The Bible says, I saw the grave give up the dead. Now, all this did not happen in the earth. Life was over for them. A time where those who had the blessed hope will rejoice. The sea gave up the dead. The grave gave up the dead. All of the people. And he said, I saw the dead stand before God. And he said, great and those who were great and small. I saw standing before God senators and I saw carpenters. I saw vice chancellors and professors and I saw villagers. I saw people who could not get food to eat and I saw those who their dogs could eat the food of royalty. He said, they all stood before God. And the moment of truth came. Books were open. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Books were open. And another book was open. He said every man was judged according to the writings of that book. And he said whosoever's name. Ah, I like the Bible. No bribery. No political party. Whosoever's name was not found. You will carry your flag carry your, your, your senatorial district, carry whatever it is to the lake of fire. Carry your prestige and your accolades. Listen to me. When you stand from the realm of the spirit and you look at the earth realm, it looks like a vapor. That's how it looks like. Anyone who has had a, a true visionary encounter and you have been given the privilege to look at earth, you know how you look at the cloud. The earth is truly like a mirage. Compared to spiritual realities. Therefore. 
we must have that blessed hope. That I know that as I'm going about my business, I know that as I'm doing whatever I'm doing, thank God for breakthrough, thank God for whatever, but I am assured that if I get out in the morning and for any reason under the sun I do not re return, don't doubt where I am. I've gone to a place of rest. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You must convince yourself. Some of you are already afraid. There's no need being afraid of what must happen. Come to terms with it and win the war. Every time you begin, the greatest enemy of mankind as we know, they ask the wisest man, you know, societally speaking, he's considered to be the wisest man in the earth. They ask him what is the greatest problem of mankind. He said he's shocked that the government have not started talking about it. He said the fact that everybody will die. He said it's a very serious issue. We should forget about the issue of politics and oil and tackle this issue that men will die. You see that he's truly wise, right? He said, look at, we, we get up and we do the things that we do and there is one common denominator. Death. Millionaires have died in this country. Their money could not save them. Is that true? Men of God have died in this country. Habalists have died in this country. Children have died in this country. People have lost babies in the hospital. People have died 100 years plus. It makes no difference. Hear me. There is a blessed hope. There is a blessed hope. Everybody say blessed hope. This is the greatest consolation any man can have. Goodbye world. I'm staying no longer with you. Goodbye pleasures of sin. I'm staying no longer with you. I've made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I've made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. A day will come. Let me tell you, every arrogant man in this earth must come to his knees. Oh yes, absolutely. There are men who live like they are gods of themselves. But my Bible says the earth is the Lord's. He said, once have I spoken and twice have we heard. All power does not belong to any political party. It does not belong to any terrorist group. There is a God that sits upon the circles of the earth. He may look powerless now, but a day will come he will show his might like the brightness of the sun. And only those who have this blessed hope. Get five points without this blessed hope. You are nothing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Marry the finest woman in the world, the most handsome and the wealthiest man in the world without this blessed hope. You are nothing. Listen, do charity, have a big ministry, be on air, organize crusades if you wish. If you do not have this blessed hope, in five minutes, when your life evaporates like a vapor, you have wasted your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We consider everything else in our life, but we do not pay attention to this blessed hope. Many of us, it's a shame that for many pastors, this is not even a theme of our messages again. I'm going to talk about other aspects and we're going to pray and speak over ourselves. But first and foremost, I owe a responsibility and I told God, our primary assignment as a ministry, we have four mandates from God. Number one is massive salvation of souls. i rather leave somebody, listen, listen, Look at what Jesus said to somebody who was lying down. He said, your sins be forgiven. And the people said, what are you saying? For many of us, that is inferior to miracles. Hallelujah. But he said, your sins be forgiven. In other words, what you need is a blessed hope. You need something higher than this. The thief on the cross, the other one said, you know, he began to harass Jesus and talk and he was unrepentant even on the cross. And the other one said, uh -uh, shut your mouth. We are getting a recompense for what we have done. We are armed robbers. They caught us. They are, they are hanging us on the cross because we stole. But this man is innocent and Jesus looked at him and said, this day, my goodness 
My all his life of misery became useful by one pronunciation to release him. Can you imagine that? Barabbas stood near the king of kings. The one who could give him blessed hope, yet he did not have it. Judas Iscariot was the treasurer of the custodian of this blessed hope, yet he did not receive it. He committed suicide and went to hell. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He went and bought a field with the money and killed himself. Blessed hope. Many times I think about my life and I'm telling you, I live a very happy life. One of the reasons why I don't worry in my life is because I know that every other thing on earth will only happen if I'm alive. Is that true? The subject of CGPA is over when you go to be with the Lord. If the trumpet sounds now, okay, let me not talk about death. Since you're afraid of death, the trumpet will still sound. The Bible talks about his appearing. The trumpet sounds. Now, I guarantee you I'm out of this place. You just see this mic on the floor. You can come and carry it if you think that what we're saying is joke. Because there are people here who are hearing this and will just laugh. I remember writing a letter to some of my friends and classmates years ago, secondary school classmates, and one of my friends he studied theater art. He said he saw my rapture entertainment paper. Rapture Entertainment Newsletter. He said he, he saw it, it got to him. I said, don't worry. It will be a newsletter indeed. By the time we check out of this place, brothers and sisters, there is an event called Rapture. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is not a prophetic event. It is a real event. It will happen. Where human beings will exit this earth, the greatest shock of humanity will happen then. So I live my life with eternity in view. Yes, I want to be blessed financially. Yes, I want ministry to expand. Yet I want this and that to happen. But brothers and sisters, beyond that, that only becomes a worthy pursuit when you know that your eternal security is there. Let me tell you the truth. Satan's ultimate goal is not to make you poor. If that's all his goal, then he has insulted himself. Are you getting what I'm saying? Satan's ultimate goal is not to put curses and spells and witches and wizards. No, that's not Satan's ultimate goal. His ultimate goal is to make sure that number one, he terminates the possibility of the blessed hope in your life. When he finds out that there is no room, you are already lost, then he will try to deal with you from the earth realm so you can fraternize with him to secure the fact that you will not make it. Hallelujah. Imagine the nightmare Satan lives with, knowing he has been doomed forever. There is no opportunity for salvation. So every morning I wake up, Satan is afraid. Because the more we advance the kingdom, the more his time of doom comes near. He said, have you come to destroy us before our time? There is a time that is their own. It's for them. It has been earmarked. It's not a secret. They know it. That a dispensation will come where death, hell, and the grave will be casted into the lake of fire. The Bible calls it the second death. That is when officially the meter of eternity will start reading. Satan is aware. Satan is aware. That's why the moment you declare the name of the Lord and you commit your life to bringing people into the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have declared war on the gates of hell. There are people right here Listen, I will never make assumptions. There are people here, you are looking at me. You know right now that if the trumpet sounds, the sincere truth is that you do not have this blessed hope. There is no guessing it, brothers and sisters. Uh, I can't remember exactly when I got born again. I think, I just know that I love God. Look at me. Come. Madam, are you married? Yes. When? Uh, Kai. When exactly was I married? I just know that somehow, somehow, this man used to stroll around and now we have many children. Are you married? And Sammy, are you married? People celebrate their wedding anniversaries with joy. 
true or false? We are 20 years in marriage and they smile. They say, for these 20 years, God has been faithful. Let me tell you something. There are many believers deceiving themselves. They do not have one, what the Bible calls the assurance of salvation. And number two, they are not taking it seriously. We think about money and every other thing aside from the blessed hope. But tonight, the Lord wants to make all things new. I'm going to take an altar call. I just feel I should stop here and let's take a powerful altar call right now to the shame of the devil. Hallelujah. Listen. There is no playing games, brothers and sisters. Whether you are poor or rich. Right now in the church, they say, don't threaten people. Don't teach about anything rapture. Just give them a good reason. <laughs> Whether you feel threatened or not, let me tell you the truth. It will happen. Jesus is coming soon. Everything that needs to happen for him to come has happened. The final sign, the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom is what we are doing right now. And at every moment, his majesty can come. If you are afraid of the coming of Jesus Christ, it's because you are going to hell. It should be a thing we should rejoice about and say, Lord, finally, an end comes to this life of misery. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Everyone rise on your feet. We are going to take this altar call right now. Please, let this be a solemn moment. I am, I am, I am dead serious with what is happening right now. Hallelujah. There are people here who are said, man of God, I love the Lord. I have served the Lord. Some of you may even be preachers. But you are saying sincerely, I am not sure that that blessed hope there is a condition for it to happen. The Bible says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's not anything that you have to do on your part. You just receive the free gift of salvation. The Bible says, for all have sinned. All have sinned. There's nothing embarrassing about realizing that you probably have not receive the gift of salvation. He said, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But the Bible says, for God so loved the world. He gave his one and only begotten son. He said, whosoever, no selection, shall believe in him. Believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. There are people here. Some of you, you have been around church. You, you do a lot of spiritual things and you have believed that that is a justification. We will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem and our hope and all our pains will be no more. We will stand and cry holy is the lamb we will worship and adore you forevermore oh this is the destiny of the church we will stand in the golden city in the new jerusalem and our hope and all our fears will be no more and we will stand with the host of heaven and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore you evermore. Right now, as we sing this song, wherever you are, inside and outside, you need to come and surrender to Jesus. I like you to passionately, like a man running away from fire. Find your way to the front right now. Find your way to the front right now. Find your way to the front right now. The moment we raise this song, I'd like you to come. Mean business with him. We will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. 
all our pain and all our fears will be no more don't sit back deceiving yourself we will stand with the host of heaven and cry holy is the lamb we will worship and adore you forevermore we will stand in the golden city New Jerusalem will be no more and we will and cry holy is the Lamb we will worship and adore you forevermore for the last time now we will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. All our pain and all our fears will be no more. We will stand with the host of heaven and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore you. and adore him forevermore the saints will see him holy 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 he's the land that's what we will sing at his feet holy 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 he's the land oh when this life is over that's a song holy 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 they that have been washed by the blood of the Lamb. Holy, holy, holy. Standing, receiving all kinds of crowns of glory. Standing at His Majesty's Where He will tell us, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. We'll sing holy. All our pain and all our fears will be no more. I know this, that I will stand with the host of heaven and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore. Listen, even if you live to 120 years hear me you're not going to die young don't be afraid this is not a funeral service we have a covenant of life and prosperity are you hearing what i'm saying what i'm telling you even if you live 200 years one of the interesting things in the bible is that they will mention a very long age of a man and then they will say and he died he still died Some of you are standing and you are crying. I tell you the truth. There is nothing to be ashamed of. Tonight can be that night. I don't care what you have done. I don't care what. There are some of us who need to rededicate our lives. I just sense that there are still one or two people that need to join them and say for me I'm rededicating it. I'm saying Lord I surrender everything. I've been stubborn towards the will and the purposes of God. You are part of that inside and outside. Join them quickly as I pray for you. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a light that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so. Hallelujah. Those of us in front here, in one minute, I'd like you to talk to the lover of your soul. Talk to him. He died for you. 
the bible says while we were yet sinners as you pray i want you to think about your life in one minute and tell yourself it's over enough of playing games and for all of us who are standing don't think because you are standing it means you should not reflect please in one minute i like everybody to reflect on your life am i living my life in a way that if i see it being replayed i will be glad i live that way am i living my life in a way that if i am to watch myself in heaven i will say thank you jesus i spent my life on the purposes of the kingdom lift your voice and pray this is serious business tonight this is why jesus shed his blood please don't you think we are playing games tonight this is a very serious issue if you're under the sound of my voice you should be thinking about your life very deeply and seriously no man will stand for you on that day there is no advocate no pastor no prophet no apostle he said books were open i saw the dead both small and great let what you are hearing tonight not stand against you in the day of judgment pray those of you in front pray Jesus, you died for me. Jesus, you died for me. I return to you now. I return to you. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. That's what you should be saying, those of you kneeling down in front. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. Just the voices, I like you to hush it from the depths of your heart. Said, whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have life everlasting whosoever believes in him hallelujah those of you in front i'd like you to say after me from the depth of your heart i never forget this day some of you are rededicating yourself some of you are truly surrendering all say after me lord jesus i surrender every aspect of my life completely to you I make you Lord of my life I have run away from you for too long but tonight like a prodigal child I return home to you the lover of my soul I return to you wash me with your blood cleanse me make me new give me a new beginning write my name in the lamb's book of life that when this life is over i will have that blessed hope i declare today that i willingly consciously make jesus lord of my life I'm willing to live by your word in the name of Jesus. Father, what a privilege. What a privilege. I ask you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, that the grace for a new beginning give them in the name of Jesus. For many of them, they have been running like a deer that pants for the water. And tonight they have found salvation. I ask that this will be a genuine desire. That on that day when we all stand, we will see them. I bless you. I declare your sins forgiven. I declare that your name is in the Lamb's book of life. And I declare that Jesus is Lord of your life. From tonight, grace to walk in righteousness. I cut you away from any lifestyle that is not consistent with the character of the kingdom. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, a big congratulations to you.
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please, I'd like you to follow the ushers in one minute. They'll just have your details and you'll return back to your seat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For those of us standing, before we continue, there's one more aspect that I must touch and then we'll pray. In one minute, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, you have found me. Keep me. Keep me. Go ahead and pray. Keep me. Keep me. Pray. Lord, you have found me. Keep me. Oh, yes. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling in the midst of the pressures and the challenges of life. Keep me. Keep me from falling. It says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, thine is the power, and thine is the glory. Keep me from falling, that I will serve you all my life. That I will serve you all my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please sit down. Let's finish up. So there are two dimensions of hope. The first is the blessed hope. And according to Titus chapter 2 verse 13, the blessed hope talks about the return of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fact that we'll be spending eternity with him in a place of absolute rest. I wrote a song Maybe 10, 13 years ago. The coming of the Lord is near. And I can hear the sound of the trumpet so loud. When the dead in Christ shall rise again. And we who are alive will be caught up in glory to a place of rest called heaven called paradise and there we will rejoice forevermore remember writing that song was my communication i've taken god serious all my life and i want to encourage us Stay with God. Stay with God. A time will come where we will be in a place of absolute rest and peace and love forever. Where there will be no wars, no terrorism, no hunger, no issue of jam and wayek, no issue of corruption and death and sickness. And that is our blessed hope. Hallelujah. Absolutely. The second aspect of hope, we'll deal with that now. When your eternity is secured, you can deal with the quality of your life here on earth. And that's what we want to deal with very quickly. The fact that our ultimate hope is beyond this life. It's not a guarantee that we should allow the devil to buffet our lives here in the earth realm. The Bible says, having the promise of this life, having the promise, uh, how did he put it now? We're going to get to that scripture first Timothy I, I think we'll get there we'll get there let me just skip it the second dimension of hope is what the Bible calls hope in this life hope in this life so our hope is not just in heaven alone we have hope even in this life hallelujah First Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. First Timothy media, if you can help us. Everyone say hope in this life. Yes. If you are supposed to live 90 years old and you are 25 years now or 30 years, how many more years do you have? At least 60 or 65 years. 
You don't want it to be 65 years of hopelessness and misery. Hallelujah. So we must have hope even in this life. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. He said, but bodily exercise profited little. For bodily exercise profited little, but godliness is profitable to all things. He said, having the promise and expectation of the life that now is, huh? and then that which is to come. So there is a promise of the quality of life that now is. Jesus speaking to the, to the disciples said, no man who has left father or mother or land houses for my sake and for the kingdoms. He said, but he will receive in this life, this and that and that, and then in the life to come, life everlasting. There are issues in our life today that we are discouraged about and we must sustain the grace to deal with it. Praise the Lord. We need hope in this life to be able to achieve our goals, to be able to push through the walls of limitations, to be able to overcome challenges and obstacles and to triumph over circumstances. I'll take it again. We need hope in this life so that we can achieve our goals we can push through the walls of limitations we can overcome challenges and obstacles and finally triumph over circumstances these are the two dimensions of hope one is the blessed hope at the return of our lord jesus christ and the other is the hope we have that assures us of victory here and now. Praise the Lord. Now very quickly. What is the basis for hope? What is the biblical basis for hope? Let's start with our blessed hope. That means what is the foundation? What is the assurance? What is the condition? What is the basis on which we have our hope? The blessed hope. What gives us assurance that what we call blessed hope is not a lie? What gives us that assurance that we will partake of it? Number one is the sacrificial and the substitutionary work of Jesus Christ. The first basis for our blessed hope, hope beyond this life, is the sacrificial and the substitutionary work of the Lord Jesus Christ. That has given us access to eternal life and peace with God. Romans chapter 6 from verse 23. So the basis for my spending eternity with God. The basis for that hope that I have is the fact that Jesus died. The sacrificial and the substitutionary work of the Lord Jesus Christ. That today has granted me access to eternal life and peace with God. Through the blood of Jesus. Romans chapter 6 from verse 23. Hallelujah. It says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, and that eternal life comes through the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. So based on the substitutionary work of Jesus Christ, it gives me a basis for having that blessed hope that truly on account of what Christ has done I will be able to stand blameless before the throne hallelujah number two what gives us the basis for the blessed hope is the words and the prophecies in the Bible which we consider to be true revelations 21 verse 1 to 5 let's rush please two major reasons why we have assurance that this blessed hope is true. Number one is that Jesus died and he has given us access. Number two is that the concept of this blessed hope has been written in the Bible and we believe it to be true. I saw a new heaven, Revelation 21. This was the revelation that was given to John the Apostle in the Isle of Patmos. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. So John tells us based on the prophecy in the book that there was truly a new heaven and a new earth 
For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. Verse 2. And I, John, saw it. Are you seeing that now? John saw it. So he's not telling us what an angel told him. John saw it. So it gives us the basis of assurance. I saw the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Verse 4. We're reading to 5. And God shall wipe away their tears. You see where we got the song that we're singing? He shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. And God himself tells us in verse 5, he said, and he that sat on the throne, not a delegate, he said, behold, I make all things new. And he said, right for these words are true and faithful so we can believe it god himself endorsed it that the concept of this blessed hope against all scientific odds is true write it he said document it so that those who will read this prophecy will know that there is truly a blessed hope are you blessed so the substitutionary work of jesus christ Gives us the basis for our blessed hope. Hallelujah. And then the prophecies of the Bible. Given and endorsed by God himself. Father gives us an assurance. So that is the, the, the basis for our blessed hope. What is the basis for our hope in this life then? The second dimension. What gives us assurance? That the cancer will die what gives us assurance that you will build the house what gives us assurance that in spite of all of the delays and the frustration in your life you will emerge a champion what gives you assurance that the ministry that looks small today would be of global impact i call them the attributes of god there are three attributes of god that gives us confidence and gives us hope in this life the first attribute of God that gives us hope in this life is his creative ability. The first attribute of God that becomes the basis for our hope in this life is his creative ability. His ability to make something out of nothing gives us hope. So no matter how hopeless my life is, when I look at that attribute of God, that it is still within his power to make something with no raw material, I know that there is hope for me. So when God says he can change my story, I can believe in and, and hold on to that his attribute. I preached a message, uh, I think it was last year, faith in the faithfulness of God. You can have faith in the attributes of God. I can have faith in the creative ability of God. And the Bible is full of this. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 to 3. Just write it. We may not project it. The Bible says verse 2. The earth was dark and void and formless. That was a hopeless situation. But then we see the creative power of God. He said and Elohim said light be. All of a sudden he began to recreate the earth out of nothing. If God can recreate the earth out of nothing. It means he can recreate my life. No matter what is missing. So that revelation gives me hope to hold on to him. The attribute of God. His creative attributes. In John chapter 6 from verse 1 to 14. John chapter 6 from verse 1 to 14. Specifically from verse 9 to 12. The entire text of five loaves and two fish. We see the creative ability of God at work. 5,000 men aside women and children, they were hungry. And Andrew saw a young lad having five loaves and two fish. And they brought it to Jesus. And Jesus said, no problem. It's not a hopeless situation when I am there. It is within my power to create. The Bible says he lifted it and he gave thanks. All of a sudden, we saw creation at work again. Hallelujah. 
Everyone say, God has creative power. Because you see, for many of us, it is difficult to see how God will step in and change your situation. Because the raw material you know to produce that change has been lost. Are you getting my point? How can I have hope that I will give birth to a child when the womb that should to keep the child has been removed? Are you getting my point? Maybe because of fibroid or something, the womb was, it was removed. I saw it. I know it's gone. Can I still have hope? The creator. The creator. Hallelujah. He said, all I need is your cooperation. The creator. The one who can make nothing is still a raw material for him. Everyone say, God has creative ability. So there is hope for my life. I think it was here we had a testimony about someone who jam came out. Remember that jam? And there was 100 and something. Hallelujah. 100 and something. And I think after one of the miracle services or so, the person went back to check the jam, confirmed he had 200 and something. The creator. See, let me tell you, the attributes of God represent the possibilities in him. And the one you believe is the one that can work for you. All of the multifaceted attributes of God represent the possibilities in him. I believe every part of him. I believe everything that he can do. So, the attributes of God, the first is his creative ability. It gives us the basis to have hope in this life. Number two is God's restorative ability. His ability to restore. Mm. What does it mean to restore? To bring back to life that which is dead. To make perfect that which is imperfect. And to bring back lost opportunities. God is able to do that. God is able to do that. There is an attribute of God that can restore things. So it gives us hope that even when our situations look hopeless, when God steps in, he can restore. In Ezekiel chapter 37 from verse 1 to 7, just write it. Just write it for time's sake. Ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to 7, Ezekiel said that he took me in the spirit of the Lord to a, a valley full of dry bones. Hallelujah. The prophet of God was taken to a valley. The Bible says there were very many and the bones were very dry, meaning they had been there in a long time. And he says, son of man, can these bones live again? And the prophet said, only thou knowest. And he said, prophesy. Speak to these bones. Hear ye the word of the Lord. And all of a sudden, the Bible says, at the prophet's word, bones began to be joined to bones. I'd like you to say, God can restore. Say it, God can restore. God can bring back to life that which is dead in my life. God can make perfect that which is imperfect in my life. And God can restore lost opportunities in my life. Oh yes. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Arise. Everything that was lost can be restored. I'd like you to say hallelujah. In John chapter 11, the entire text is from verse 1 to 44. But the part that concerns us is 17 to 27 and 39 to 44. Don't project it because of time. It talks about the story of a man called Lazarus in a place called Bethany. The Bible tells us that Lazarus, one who was greatly beloved of Jesus Christ, Jesus loved him so much. A report got to Jesus and they said, Lazarus whom you love is sick. And Jesus said, don't worry. The sickness is not unto death. Meaning the situation would not be worse than it already is. And when the master speaks, you believe him. But then they returned. And Jesus told them, let's go to our brother Lazarus for he sleepeth. And they said, ah, if he sleepeth, it's good for him. And then he came directly. He said, our brother Lazarus is dead. Four days. And the restorer. 
he was on his way coming and when Mary saw him she was angry she was grieved and they said master if you had been here Lazarus would not have died he said but now I know that it's not late and Jesus said Lazarus your brother will arise there will be restoration he said I know Lazarus I know you have already been speaking about the blessed hope I know and Jesus said do you not know that I am the resurrection that means it's not an event it's a personality it can happen now for you i am the resurrection and i am the life and he looked at a stone men had concluded and he said roll away the stone let's review that case for 10 years your father's promotion has been delayed but he said roll away the stone you take a step of faith show me that you have hope by going to roll away the stone i will roll it for you roll it if you want me to visit that case roll away the stone and they rolled away the stone and jesus stood and in chapter 35 the bible says and jesus wept he had so much compassion and he said father i thank you because you hear me always and i don't say this because i'm doubting you paraphrasing but so that these people will know and he echoed a voice the resurrection and the life he sent a signal that rattled Hades, the place of dead, the dead people. And he said, Lazarus, you know why he mentioned Lazarus' name? If he just said, come forth, every dead person would have come to life. And so he mentioned the one he wanted to come. He sent a word and that word came, passed through the astral realm and went and the word like a meter and it saw the spirit of Lazarus and he said, the master calleth. That's how rapture will happen. The blast of the trumpet will rattle through the gates of the spirit and the doors of life will open. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And all of a sudden, they saw a man coming out. And he said, take off those grave clothes. Oh, God can restore. Who asks you to close those chapters in your life? Am I speaking to you? Who asks you to close the chapters? There are people who do not even confront certain issues again because they have closed it. But tonight the Lord is saying, open it up. I want to visit it. I want to visit it. I want to visit it. I gave you a prophetic word, but it is November right now. Can that word still come to pass? Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Listen, I have learned from experience and I've learned in my life that all we need to do, listen, the manifestation of your miracle does not take time it is the process of preparation that takes time for about 12 years joseph was being trained but in one night he slept a prisoner and woke up a prime minister are you hearing what i'm saying in one night hadassah esther for one year she kept preparing listen the fact that you are going through a period of pruning a period of waiting does not mean god is not moving if you think he's too slow you will want to move faster than him and you will complicate your journey wait in one night god changed the story of a nation the prophet said by this time tomorrow even if he said by this time next year it will be fair enough but he said tomorrow 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 someone is sitting here tonight by tomorrow night you will sit down with your hand on your head and you'll be saying my lord i didn't know i was this close I was right at the edge of a breakthrough but couldn't see it. That's the testimony of many people now. Listen. You are you have come so close. You've been enduring for years. But now that you are about to break open the gates of destiny, many of us want to turn back. I want you to know that the restoration ability of God is still in force. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I almost can't go. 
I was right at the edge of a breakthrough but couldn't see. Oh, listen, let me tell you something. I trust the Lord. Something happened to us, a very interesting story. I won't give you all the details. Happened to us at the airport when we were traveling. Some things came up. There were lots of complications and it was going to affect our tickets and all of that. And you know, we were a bit concerned because I think there was issue of overbooking and so on and so forth. And we had to make sure that we arrived on time and all of that. And humanly speaking, humanly speaking, at a point, in fact, about 30 minutes, 30 minutes to the time that we eventually secured the tickets, there was, all hope was lost. They told us there's no room again. This and that and that has happened, so they, they were, there had to be changes, and there was no human way. I called the guys and I said, guys, this is the situation we're in now. If things get bad, this and that and that, this is worse, let's just prepare for the worst, but God is faithful. Let me tell you something. It did not take more than 10 minutes before they wrote all of the tickets. Is that true? We're the last to, to get into the flight. Hallelujah. They were standing. I'm not sure they were even aware. You see that? And they just, the tick, everything was in less than 10 minutes. God, when God is ready to stand up on your case, see, when you see God keep quiet, Papa, they boy, you preach the message. When God is silent, when God is silent, that's when you should start talking. Praise him. Give him room. Give him space through your, your praise. And say, Lord, I don't know what you are doing, but I know you are doing something. Take the time to prepare the table because it's going to be a large table. There are people who should come. Take the time. When God arises, he will scatter. It. Let me tell you something. When it is your season of breakthrough, I don't care whether they say curses or yokes or X, Y, Z. God will stamp everything and open the door and say, let me see the man who will stop you. For someone, if you will just wait a little longer, this is the word of the Lord. The miracle will happen before you celebrate Christmas. Just wait a little longer. The mighty God is still alive. He told you and he's still faithful. Oh, we judge him faithful. It will still happen. It will still happen. Who is God speaking to? It will still happen. It will still happen. One of our brothers here, both him and, the, and his wife, the, the ladies in Osh, Oshas and all of that. I remember when that brother met me. They are married now. They married early this year. I think around April. I remember when that brother met me. And the brother was, you know, he was sharing with me a bit of, about his marriage life and all of that. And I told him, I said, God will bless you and God will do a quick work. Brothers and sisters, within a short time, I was shocked. And if you see the pretty and godly lady, a combination of everything, within and without. Come on, ushers. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whereas someone has been searching without the help of God for decades. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Let's sing it one more time. I searched all over, come on. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Hallelujah. His ability to restore. God can restore the job of your father. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God can restore it. He can restore it. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. God can restore every aspect of your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He said, I will restore to you the years the canker worm has stolen. The palmer worm and the caterpillar, I will restore. It is within my power to restore. 
the second attribute of God. In 2 Kings chapter 6, 2 Kings chapter 6, let's project it very quickly. 2 Kings chapter 6, I want us to hurry up because we'll pray. Wow. We must rush. From now, take up wings. We're going to rush. Hallelujah. 6 verse 1. And the sons of the prophets came to Elisha. Behold, now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Verse 2. Let us go, we pray thee unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, he said, go ye. In other words, let's increase space. Verse 3. And, and one said, be content, I pray thee, to go with thy servants. And so Elisha goes with them. Verse 4. So they went with them. He said, and as they came to Jordan, they were cutting down wood to make the place for their meeting. Five. But as one was felling the beam, what happened? The axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, alas, master. It was borrowed. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. I need help. I collected this to do the work of God, but it has landed me in trouble. Halabasi Verse 6. And the man of God said, Calm down. He said, Where did it fall? There is a God that can restore. Who is God speaking to? And he showed him the place. And he used an insignificant thing. Sorry. A stick that has no relevance. And he threw it upon. And the Bible says the iron from under started swimming until it came to the top. Verse 7. Therefore he said, take it up to you. And he took his hand. I prophesy to someone in the name that is above all names. In a way and a manner you never expected to happen. My God will show up for you before the end of this month. In the name that is above all names. I'm speaking to you. There are things that you have lost and only God can give you. I stand in under my office and in the name that is above all names. I prophesy to you no matter where that axe is it is still in the river it didn't disappear it only left you in the name that is above all names we command that axe head to float please sit down listen look at me the fact that you don't see a thing does not mean it has stopped existing it is there but it is not within your reach it is within the power of the master to call it from wherever it is. I hope you understand. How many of us can state, um, I think that's the first law of thermodynamics, right? What does it say? Huh? Energy can neither be what? Nor destroyed. Is that true? That means the concept of disappearance is a mirage. It only leaves your sight, but it's somewhere there. Mm. The bones were scattered, but when the master spoke, they found themselves. You would have thought it's over. Hear me? Let me tell you something. Armed robbers came to your house and they stole. You do not see what they've carried, but there are many kinds of it in the earth. And when the master steps up as a restorer, you will see things in dramatic ways come into your life. And when God restores, he does not give you what you lost. He gives you what you lost and what you would have gained if you still had it. That's what restoration is. If God just gives you what you lost, it's called progress, not restoration. Until God gives you plus the balance on top. He said, who has believed our report? The third attribute of God very quickly that gives us the basis for hope in this life is God's ability to bring acceleration God's ability his attribute as a God that can suspend time he can move beyond time move beyond protocols he can expedite the process of certain things his ability to bring acceleration in 1 Kings chapter 18, 
from verse 41 to 46. First Kings chapter 18 from verse 41 to 46. The Bible speaks to us about the prophet. Hallelujah. A great prophet of God. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up and drink, for I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Next verse. We read down to 46. And Ahab went to eat and drink. And Elijah went to the top of Camel. Watch this. Ahab ate and drink and he started running. He had started going. But Elijah seemed to be delayed. He was here sitting. Let's watch what happens. And he cast himself down upon the earth and prayed. 43. And all of that. He told his servant, go and check until seven times. 44. All the time. While those seven times were happening, Ahab was already running. He was already moving ahead. The Bible says it came to pass that behold there arises a little cloud like a man's hand and he said go up and say to Ahab okay right here sorry I, I got it wrong. This is the point where he told Ahab prepare your chariot get it down uh, that the rain stopped in us. So now he started running. Verse 45. Ah. The Bible says, and it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind and there was a great rain and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. So we see that Ahab had gone very far but the man of God was there, no help. 46. And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he gathered up his loins and ran on barefoot. Come on, say speed. A man on barefoot started running. He said he ran before Ahab and he caught up with him down to Jezreel. So it gives us hope that no matter what the delay is, God can, God can give speed to your feet. And you will run and in one month, you will do what has taken men 10 years. 10 years. Brothers and sisters, believe me, it is possible. When God quickened, he said he will make your feet like the hind's feet. His ability to bring acceleration. The Bible tells us how that when Jesus told the disciples to go to the other side, they entered the boat and they started going ahead of him. Is that true? And the Bible says he stayed to pray. They were six hours ahead of Jesus. Six hours ahead. But when he got up, he started walking. And within a short time, he caught up with them. And he was about to overtake them. They thought he was a ghost. And he walked on water. It doesn't have to be the normal process. When God steps in, he can break protocols. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In John chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10. But our verse of emphasis is from verse 6 to 10. Project verse 6 to 10 for us. John chapter 2 from verse 6 to 10. The Bible tells us about a wedding in Cana. And the Bible tells us they took out time to prepare that wedding. It probably took them days to make wine. But that wine finished. They needed a miracle. And something happened. It says, and there were there six water pots of stone. After the manner of the purifying of the Jews. Containing two or three, this and that. And then verse 7. And Jesus said, fill the water pots. It does not have to undergo the process of fermentation. There is a spiritual fermentation process that can happen. Come on now. Ah, yes. You don't need to wait until it produces all of those things. Are you getting what I'm saying? No enzymes, no nothing, no ethanol, no nothing. No, no hydrocarbon, no nothing. A technology in the spirit. Fill the water pots with water. And they fill them up to the brim. Verse 8. And he said, draw it out and take it to the governor. Chemical reaction finished. Yield 100%. Are you getting my point? 100%. No waste. Nothing to throw away. No releasing of any CO2 or anything. No. Chemical process finished. Expedited time at once. And he said, draw it out and take it. Verse 9. And when the ruler of the feast tasted the wine, so on the way it became wine at once. And he knew not whence it was. He said the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. Verse 10. And he said every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. 
and when men have well drunk then that which is worse comes in other words people give their best at the first time but he said why have you kept the good wine until now there is someone here within a short time what you will do men will think you took 10 years to do it but that it happened within days one of our brothers Mukhtar I think he did his whole, his whole project within a short time because they later cancelled the whole thing and what he did within two days was greater than what he did in months everybody shout speed shout it again oh God will accelerate your life hallelujah finally before we pray how do we activate hope it must be activated it doesn't just happen three keys and we'll rise up to pray activating hope principle number one total surrender to the lordship of jesus christ you want to activate hope in your life both blessed hope and hope in this life it starts with surrendering to jesus christ total surrender gives you an eternal consolation that in the end of all things you will be with jesus forever i call it the master hope the master hope when you surrender to the lordship of jesus christ you have ultimately activated hope scriptural references romans 5 verse 2 don't project romans 5 verse 2 and then first john 5 verse 13 talks about us knowing that we have eternal life so total surrender to the lordship of jesus number two how do we activate hope the power of testimonies the power of testimonies the power of testimonies psalm 66 verse 16 the power of testimonies psalm 66 verse 16 declaring your testimony activates an assurance in the listeners the bible is full of testimonies that many have held on to and seen it reproduced in their lives testimonies can reproduce themselves in the lives of the listeners so every time i testify of what god has done in my life it activates hope so someone who is about giving up just hears that god did this and he said if god did it then i will still hold on hallelujah psalm 66 verse 16 says come and hear all ye that fear the lord and i will declare what he had done for my soul i will declare it i will declare it in luke chapter 8 from verse 26 to 39 just give us verse 39 luke chapter 8 from verse 39 but the whole context is 26 to 39 the bible speaks to us about the madman in gadara hallelujah the madman in gadara after he was healed he was blessed he wanted to go with jesus and jesus said no go and the bible says return to your house jesus was telling him go and testify return to your house and show how great things God has done unto thee. And the Bible says, And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. So he published. Testimonies are very powerful. Let me give you two more scriptures. Psalm 22 verse 22. And Psalms 40 verse 9. Psalms 22 verse 22 and Psalms 40 verse 9. All these scriptures point to the fact that it is important for us to testify. In fact, the Bible says it this way. It says, and they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Your testimony is very important. There are many people here, God has done too many things for you, but nobody knows. Nobody knows about it. Hallelujah. When they say submit your, your names and come and tell us what God has done. There are many of us here that have striking testimonies. 
Many of us come for counseling and God does remarkable things and we keep quiet. I tell you, we don't share one over 20 of the remarkable testimonies that happen in this house and through this ministry. In fact, there are more people who share testimonies outside of Koinonia than those who share testimonies here. When you share your testimony, you, you activate hope in the life of people. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'll never forget Steve Strings. I remember one time um, he gave a testimony. It was a miracle how he got admission in ABU. He got admission on the third list. The first list came out, his name was not there. The second list came out and his name was not there. But he had the testimony of someone who were in living faith that Sunday. And the testimony of somebody and the person testified that he went around Senate seven times angry and saying lord this is jericho it must fall and when admission list came out his name was there steve strings said that's it steve strings went around seven times that list came out his name was there because of testimonies listen many of you have taken the same steps some people took and you got the result but you have kept quiet hallelujah One of our school of ministry people, he, he came in, I think he should be around here, and he came, he, he sent me a text, a very humbling testimony. In fact, I told him to come over at the school of ministry tomorrow just to share with, with our current students to bless them what God has remarkably done in his life within a short time. God has done too many things for us, and if you will not give him the glory, you would stop seeing his hand in your life. He said, if you will not glorify me, I will raise up stones. Meaning, I will only raise up what will glorify me. Hallelujah. So, the power of testimonies. Number three, and this is where we wrap up tonight. The ministry of prophets of God. How do you activate hope? The ministry of true prophets of God. Not just prophets in office, but men and women of God who stand and in prophetic dimensions listen to me this is this is very important i want you to listen because we're about to pray all through scripture true prophets of god have been dispensers of hope and agents of change men have always been god's weapons that he will use to bring hope alive and to create changes in people hallelujah Joseph was the prophet of God that was sent to Egypt to preserve them. Elijah was sent to a widow in Zarephath to preserve her and restore to her what the famine had taken. Elijah was also sent, um, Elisha was sent to the woman in 2 Kings chapter 4. The Bible talks about the wife of the sons of the prophet. They were about to take her children and do trade by battle with them. And the woman ran to the prophet. And the prophet said, what do you have in your house? Do this and that and that. And the woman came out of the situation. Hallelujah. In 2 Kings chapter 5, the story of Naaman. The Bible says Naaman was the captain of the, of the Syrian army. He was a great man, but he was leprous. Hallelujah. And when they sent him with a letter, the prophet gave an instruction. Go and wash yourself seven times in Jordan. And that was it. The scripture we just shared in 2 Kings chapter 6. The restoration of the axe head by the instruction of a prophet of God. Listen to me. When a people lack a prophetic voice. When a people or a ministry or a, ter a, a, a territory lack true apostolic and prophetic voices then hopelessness despair and doom will become their experience i'm saying this please get it i will repeat myself when a people when a ministry when a territory lacks true apostolic and prophetic voices then hopelessness Despair and doom becomes their experience again and again and again. I'm 
trying to look for a scripture that just came to my spirit. Ezekiel 22 verse 30. Let's look at something that the prophet said. Ezekiel 22 verse 30. We're rounding up right now. While they project that, I'd like you to write Ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to 7. We've read the scripture. The valley of dry bones. It happened to the prophet of God. The prophet of God gave an instruction. Every time you are in need of hope, you are in need of change, among other principles you engage in is find a true prophet of God. He said, and I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. So I destroyed the land because there was no man. The Bible says they are taken for a prey and none say it restore. There must be a voice. Let me tell you something. In every territory and every, every society, there are prophetic agents that God plans strategically. They represent dispensers of hope. Men who God stamps their voice, stamp their words. Hallelujah. Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13, the last verse. Hosea chapter 12, the prophet told us something that has become an instruction in the body of Christ. Hosea chapter 12, verse 13. He said, I'm by a prophet. The Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. By what? A prophet. Now hold on. It is true that God delivered the people. But their hopes were shattered until a man showed up. They never, it is true that there was prophecy that there would be deliverance for them. But nothing happened until a man, Moses, showed up. The moment that prophet of God appeared, hope was brought back to life. When they saw him, he gathered them and said, people, begin to prepare. You are days away from this captivity and you'll be out. And he went and challenged that, 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 that gun called Pharaoh. Bishop Oyedeko said, prophets are territorial commanders. It's exact word. Now, it may sound arrogant, but it is not. It's an election of grace. When God calls a man and truly puts a true apostolic and prophetic man to God makes it a point of duty to back you. When you speak in the name of the Lord, he said, I prophesy, but I did it as I was commanded. And he said, hear ye the word of the Lord, spoken to an envoy. He said, believe the Lord. And by a prophet, sorry, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, he still preserved them. The ministry of true apostles and prophets of God in the earth has not ended. Contrary to the popular theology that people speak, it has not ended. There are still men and women but you doubt their ministry to your detriment. The Bible says, believe the Lord and you shall be established. It says, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Doubt the Lord and refuse to be established. Doubt his prophets and suffer for the rest of your life. It's not idol worship. I know there is an imbalance where men have made themselves gods. But I can tell you, it is part of the program of God to use men to speak in the purposes and the counsel of God. When the prophet Simeon held on to Jesus Christ, he began to prophesy to him. There was a prophetess, 84 years she had been in the temple, waiting for the consolation of Israel. She carried Jesus Christ and spoke and she was ready to die. And Jesus walked and nothing could kill him until he gave his life by a prophet he came Isaiah prophesied unto us a child is born by a prophet he came by a prophet he was preserved if Jesus Christ needed to subscribe to the true ministry of the prophetic then you cannot do without it hallelujah we are going to pray we will pray these three prayer points and I will be prophesying from the depth of my heart let hope arise rise up on your feet let hope rise 
Darkness trembles in your holy light. Just sing it once or twice and then I speak about lives. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy I like you to see the hopeless situation before you and sing this song to his face. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy Oh, it will change. Let hope, let, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. For the last time now, let hope rise. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your Hallelujah. Three prayer points. Prayer point number one. Lord, you are a creator. I need a creative miracle in my life. Lift your voice and pray. Can I have some prayer people behind the mic, please? We have five minutes to pray. Lord, I need a creative miracle. Oh, she brought a creative miracle. I need a creative miracle. I need a creative Hallelujah. Listen. Prayer point number two. Mention every area where the devil has taken anything and say, Lord, tonight, let there be a restoration. Let there be a restoration. Lift your voice and pray. Restoration. In finances. Restoration. In family. Pray. Hallelujah. Prayer point number three. Lord, grant feet, speed to my feet. Listen, listen. Lord, be 
before December, let me accomplish what I have not done from January to now. Lift your voice and pray. Give me speed. Give me speed. If you pray from your heart, God will answer. If you pray from your heart, God will surprise you. If you pray from your heart, supernatural accomplishment by an anointing and the heart of the Lord came upon Elijah and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he died and he died God in one month you will do in my life and do my life what has not been done in ten months Lord in one month in one month I believe you oh I believe you in one month in one month you will do in my life in one month you will do in my health in one month you will do in my finances what has not been done in ten months Hallelujah. 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 We are still going to pray that prayer point. I'd like you to mention three things that you want to see done before miracle service this month. If you believe, listen, if you don't have faith, it's okay. You can stand aside. Just be praying in tongues as we pray. But if I am releasing my faith with you, that three things you are telling God, Lord. I hold on to hope that between now and miracle service week, do it for me. If you believe God, lift your voice and pray. Oh, I believe you. Oh, I believe you. Lord, we believe you. We are believers in this house. 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 You have done it before. You will do it again. You have done it before. You will do it again. We agree as a house that before miracle service, three things, mighty things, mighty visitations, you will do in our life. Three things, mighty things. We believe you. We believe you. Pray. God will do it. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God will do it. My God will do it. Lift your hands. I want to speak over your life. I told you the third key is the true apostolic and prophetic ministry. Brothers and sisters, I don't know what your expectations are. But I know that for God to have brought this message, there are people who need a miracle desperately. And it will take a prophetic word. In the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name that is above all names, if you take me as a servant of God, in the name that is above all names, I speak over the situation that has challenged your life. If I be a man of God, between now and the end of this month, it must answer to the name of Jesus. Amen. It must answer to the name of Jesus. Amen. It must answer to the name Amen. of Jesus. It must answer Amen. to the name of Jesus. Amen. I come tonight in the name of the Lord, the captain of our salvation. I come in the name of the one who is the multi-breasted one who said, is there anything too hard? 
and I invoke the powers of the heavens. I decree and declare in the name that is above all names. Lord, I prophesy, let miracles erupt in the lives of your people. Let miracles erupt in the lives of your people. Receive financial miracles. In one month, someone here will get a financial harvest Amen. that January to October has not given you. I prophesy it in the name of Jesus. In one month, someone will give you a gift before miracle service that no man has given you in your entire life. For someone here, you will hear a testimony from home that you have never had all your life. Amen. Hallelujah. There are some of us who have been trusting God for specific things. And as it is humanly speaking, it doesn't look like you have what it takes to get it. But in the name of Jesus, may the hand of the Lord come upon you tonight. Amen. And I prophesy speed. I prophesy speed. I prophesy speed. In the name of Jesus. And every power and every force that frustrates the rising of hope in your life. In the name of Jesus. I come under the anointing of the spirit. I challenge those powers. And I command them to let you go now. The Bible says by a prophet they were preserved. I command that you are preserved. Amen. Your going out and coming in is blessed. Amen. We will not hear any report of death. Amen. Death, we speak to you. Anywhere you see one of these ones, we command you to stay clear. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. And every fear of death, every fear of failure that is in you, that makes you think you will not see the end of the year. The Bible says by a prophet they were preserved. I command that you are preserved. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The God that brought you to 2014 will take you into 2015. Thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day. Nor the noisome pestilence. Or all these that wasted in noonday. I command that you are preserved. The seal of the blood is upon you. Every altar that invokes your name will invoke fire upon them. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Every covenant, every altar that invokes your name or that of your family members. What will show up is the fire of the Holy Ghost. Be blessed. In the name of Jesus. Everything this ends that are lifted said to do i pray in the name of jesus may they prosper those of you who are walking i prophesy that these two months will be the best time you have had walking this year in the name of the lord jesus thank you jesus those who are trusting god students for where the school fees of next session will come from before miracle service you have your school fees in your account in the name of the Lord Jesus, we provoke the ministry of destiny help us. Before miracle service, you return with your testimonies. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we give you praise. This is your first time worshiping with us here. This is Koinonia and we love you wherever you are. Please make your way to the front right now. We want to pray for you very quickly. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Celebrate them Koinonia. God bless you. God bless you. No matter how far inside and outside, God bless you. You are most welcome. You are most welcome. Let's keep standing. We're rounding up. Let's keep standing, please. Let's keep standing. God bless you. Keep coming. Make your way to the front. We have a blessing and a prophecy for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. God bless you for coming. This is Koinonia. Hallelujah. Your life will never be the same, I guarantee you. Your life will never be the same. We want to pray and bless you. We are here every Friday and God is doing mighty things in our midst.
Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaskade bashkana kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata pakotos koto pray kate kate kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.